Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My God, guys, how are you doing? It's been a while since the last time I have been streaming live for this uh, content. So I'm kind of perplexed. I'm looking at the chat. I'm like, my God, what's going on? So many questions. You know, guys, when <laughs> the last time I was on and I was streaming, um, I was actually always uh, uh, preparing notes and stuff in order for the live chat to be somehow entertaining because of the live stream, because we didn't have a lot of interaction. But now, guys, OMG, I think uh, we're going we gonna to dive straight into it. I don't even have to use the content that I've prepared. You guys are asking questions like crazy. So thank you very much for joining, guys. It's an awesome, it's so, so great to have you on. It's uh, just a small note before we get started. Um, lately, what happened to the channel, the, I'm, I'm sorry, I always gotta see if I see the chat right. Um, so I'm not missing anything um, and be patient, be, bear with me. Um, it's nuts what happened to our channel recently. The growth, uh, it's wow. We have actually two viral videos the one video from Jillian Michaels with that uh, crazy swing. I think the herniator is probably the best description that we found <laughs> for the swing. I was like, guys, let me know if you have any, any description for the swing. So that video took off. I think it sits at around 180,000 views. That's nuts. That's really nuts for a small kettlebell channel like we are. And then the second video that also went viral, that was like two days later. And that was in, in my vacation. When we were on vacation, I was like, oh, I got to do these videos. And then uh, it was a V-Shred's video that took off. And that sits at around 120,000 something. And every video that we posted now, I think the YouTube algorithm fell in love with our content, which is beautiful, by the way which is really, really awesome. It maybe drew you in now that you're watching, maybe some of you who have now subscribed to the channel, which really, really appreciate the love, guys. And uh, that's, that's, that's amazing. And every video that I'm posting now is, boom, takes off pretty fast. So the iron is hot right now. So I gotta be at it. That's why, guys, you see, we're uploading daily content. And it's a beautiful thing because I've set up my working schedule the way that I'm able to dedicate the time to upload content and to work with the content. Because you have to imagine, you have to imagine 2020 uh, took everyone by surprise. You guys know it. So I've dedicated time and effort to work with our online stuff. And we have an awesome academy set up. Last year I started with German content. And uh, then we've switched to English content, which is incredible. It's taking off as well. I think we've almost sold 100 courses. I kid you not, guys. We've almost sold 100 courses of 90 Days of Kettlebells. By the way, you'll find a link in the description. But, but I got a surprise for you guys. If you stick with me, I got something for you. Everybody that's live right now, I got something for you. If you stick with me till the end, then I want to share something because I want to say thank you. So almost at 100 courses and the YouTube content, it's, it's nuts. And this is actually, I'm telling Angie this all the time. This is probably the first month right now, July 2021, is uh, June 2021. It's going to be the first month where we're able to almost pay everything in full with our content only that's guys that's nuts so i'm incredibly motivated and i remember how it started uh i think two years ago i was making two or three subscribers a month <laughs> you have to imagine i was uploading two weeks uh, two videos per week for four subscribers per month but i stuck with it i was like no nah. And the YouTube content back then was trash, believe me. And it, it was German, not that German was trash content, but uh, I didn't know how to handle that stuff. So I started working and now this is the eight, it's 800 plus videos that we have on our channel right now. It's nuts, right? And now this month we were able to generate, I can't believe it. I think it's uh, 3,000 subscribers or two and a half thousand. It's, it's nuts, guys. So. Um, pardon this long intro. I just, I'm just incredibly grateful 
and thankful that you guys are tuning in and that you're deciding to give us your time because that's one of the most valuable assets that you have is your time and i want to make the most out of it out of it and i truly appreciate it so now let's dive into the questions guys we have 19 folks in the chat thank you so much for joining now we have uh, kyle de silva saying um gregory and angie if someone trains solely hard style versus solely soft style doing the same workouts how would you see their fitness, strength, body comp develop? Would you see any major differences? That's a very great question. I truly believe if you take a look at kettlebell sport athletes, there is one guy or two guys that I see who have a great body. I'm not saying that kettlebell sport athletes do not have a great body. Don't misunderstand me. But from a muscular perspective... I think Denis Vasilev and uh, Ivan Markov. And Denis is probably even more leaner and more muscular than, uh, than Ivan. And those are the two examples that I follow, and they do kettlebell sport only. However, you have to imagine they also do GPP. So what is GPP? GPP is the General Physical Preparation Program. So what that means is they prepare for an event, they prepare for a, a bout, a competition, and then what they do is they do some squats, they do some deadlifts, they do some stuff, such so some prep preparation, some other training auxiliary, aux auxiliary exercises to build up for their comp so that they get better in the long cycle, the jerk or whatever their, their discipline is. Having that said, I believe if you are working kettlebell sport only, and working as efficient as possible with your time and with your energy, then you gradually move into, I would say, metabolic conditioning realm. And if you don't do any grinds, and grinds are heavy deadlifts, heavy presses, um, heavy Turkish get-ups, uh, heavy squats, and heavy. With heavy, I mean a weight that's challenging you. If you're just starting out, that may be a 12 kilo then I believe maybe you're missing out on the muscle building aspect of kettlebell training if you only do kettlebell sport. So this is kind of my opinion. However, it may be that this opinion is not as good as, inf as informed as it should be. So I believe if you combine it, that's why we believe hybrids are the guys and the gals that take the most out of their training and most out of body composition because they combine the grinds, those exercises that are heavy, that are really challenging your structure and your muscles more than, for example, a ballistic exercise, which could be a hand-to-hand -hand swing, right? So I believe combining hard style and kettlebell sport is the best thing that you can do because that's what we do right now. And I have to admit, I used to be the kind of guy who was like, I think kettlebell sport is the best thing. And now I've, I, I've, I've really opened up my mind through the coaching that I've gotten with Luca, which was such a great experience. If you're looking for a hard style coach, Luca Corcia, my brother from another mother from Kettlebell Hard Style Pro, he's the man, man. <laughs> he's the man, man, let me tell you. So I think the combination is what works probably both, right? So Roy Jackson saying, I've been following your channel for a couple of months. I work out about three to four times a week with kettlebells, doing simple and sinister. And, and, and one thing that I want to mention, I, I forgot, Kyle, uh, when it comes to body composition, nutrition always plays a role, a big role. So, Roy, um, work out three to t uh, four times per week uh, with kettlebells. Uh, doing simple and sinister, armor building, one of your full workouts or heavy club work. Ooh, that sounds great, Roy. Uh, as I'm getting older, 40 this year, um, my recovery seems to take longer. Yeah, I do understand. When I go big on a workout where I have gone heavier with the weights and kept the same time on the tension, there are times where I feel super worn down for a couple of days. Can you talk about how to think about recovery in terms of how long you are sore after workouts, how often you work, and what is the balance between striving for intensity and the concept of training as practice? Um, wow, you, you got so many comments, brother. So let me just uh, jump right in there. So... Um, what do I believe in, in terms of uh, recuperation and recovery? It's interesting, Roy, that you're talking about this because I feel this somehow myself. Uh, I'm 37. I'm turning 
uh, what? I'm 84, uh, 84, uh, 1984. That's my birth year. Sometimes I got it. I, I got a date back. I'm like, what, what am I? It's 37, 38. <laughs> it's nuts, right? When you're getting older and then you go, you scroll down when you have to register somewhere and then you scroll in, you scroll in. Where's my birth year? <laughs> that's nuts. And that's at the same time. It's beautiful, right? So as we get older, I believe it is so incredibly important to, 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 Make sure that recovery is adapt, right? And adapted. Now, let me uh, point your attention to this incredible podcast that I've listened to on the weekend from Squat University. Um, you really have to search for it. Squat University, if you're not familiar with Dr. Aaron Horschik, I think is his name, please follow them. Squat University is a, 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 a source of knowledge for everybody. He's, what, what Dr. Ehring is doing is, is, is just beyond awesome. So he was on that podcast with Dr. Stuart McGill. Dr. Stuart McGill is one of the leading spine, uh, spine scientists and doctors that, that specialize in spine safety and health. And then you had no, none other than the legendary Ed Cohn, one of the greatest power lifters ever on the podcast. And they were talking about this concept. And so what Ed Cohn said because he never got injured. The question was, what did you do that you never got injured? Still, you were able to lift those heavy weights. And Ed Cohn said, most folks, and maybe that helps you, Roy, most, po most folks lift heavy for too long. Let's digest this once again. Most people lift too heavy for too long. So I've realized this concept and it's so great that you're talking about it and that you ask this question because this is the first week where I'm actually doing a deload phase. Now, what is my recovery concept normally? My recovery concept is normally I work out to eight to 12 weeks, three to four times a week uh, with kettlebells only right, right now. Excuse me. And um, then after eight to 12 weeks, I take a full week break. I I'm not like a snail that I don't do anything but I really slow down. I don't lift anything. I stay away from the weights for one full week. So now I'm feeling the same that my body's somehow telling me sometimes like, like oof, this recovery is really, wow, I, I'm recovering harder. Sometimes I feel it really in my bones. So then this is the first week where I'm thinking about deloading. So what I do is all of my workouts are with the 16. 16 kilo is very easy to handle for me. So that's what I do right? So working with the 16, that's what I do. And another thing that I do is when I work with doubles, I go down to the uh, double 12s. So this is how I, and Dr. Stuart McGill coins this term, he said, this deload phase is, and this really struck a nerve with me, he said, you are deloading in order for your body to catch up with the recovery process. Let's digest this again, because sometimes you got to hear a great, great statement twice. When you recuperate and you have a deload phase, what you want to do is you use lighter weights for your body to catch up with the recovery phase. Because your body's recovering. And so if you lift heavy, then your body's lagging behind with the recovery phases. That's where injuries happen. And Roy, what is also a good aspect is you listen to your body. And your body's telling you, hey, man, the recovery is getting harder and harder. What should I do? So my advice would be, Roy, maybe use a deload phase. And I can't even tell you how long this deload phase is going to be. I think it's one or maybe two weeks. And then the, the, the next break's coming where I'm taking a full week uh, break. Because we want to lift smart. We want to train smart. The older you get, the smarter you want to work out, right? So that's what I do. And another concept that really struck a nerve with me was when I talked to Luca uh, Kurcher from Kettlebell Hotstar Pro. Um, he influenced my philosophy and my thinking so immensely. And he said, don't consider a workout just a workout, consider it a practice. So what does that mean? When you do martial arts, you don't just work out. You want to practice the exercises. You want to practice the moves. That's what I'm doing. And sometimes I intentionally use lighter weights. I stick with 20, 24, even though I've, sometimes I feel like I could pick up the 28 or 32 when we do our workouts, but I stay with the 20 or 24 because I want to practice the moves. And then sometimes that's what also Luca said. I'm going to quote him many times. He's such a great coach. Um, he said, um, 
the training is putting money in the bank and you spend it on fight night. And I can tell you, I think a few days ago, I had one of those fight night moments where I was picking up the 32 and I was rocking with it. And let me tell you, the recu recu recuperation process was nuts. So it took me a long time. So, and guys, you, you are nuts in the chat. And I saw Kyle, you just donated. Thank you, brother. I got to mention this. You donated five Canadian dollars. Thank you, brother, for the donation. Thank you for your hard work. I watch a number of kettlebell channels and just started watching yours. Your content is consistently amazing. Thank you, Kyle. Really, really, really appreciate it. So, Roy, uh, I hope this answered your questions. Um, uh, you got, and you said something. I have increased my weights over the past year, but trying to get through the next level. For a couple of exercises, I find that with sports style approach in your channel for doing a movement for say two minutes, I cannot go near as heavy as doing a hard style set of, of reps, Imam. And that's normal, Roy. Uh, do not think that you have to use the same approach. You mentioned the armor building complex from Dan John. Do not think that you use the same approach with hard style concept training and apply it for time. I realized this. You actually have to change the progressive nature of your workouts or of your progression in general. You don't work a lot for time or you do Imam. I love, I, I, used, to, I used to hate Imam because I thought it was a stupid concept. And now where I'm seeing the heart style perspective, I start liking it and I really start loving it because Imam means I can still work for time, but I can also work for sets. That's great. So don't think that you have to combine it. It's the emo method. That's the bridging, the bridging gap, right? So we have uh, Roy saying, love your work. And thank, thank you, man. Thank you for asking the question. James saying, aside from kettlebells, do you and Angie incorporate things like push-ups and pull-ups into your training? I'm almost exclusively training with bells and would love to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you. James, right now, we're doing kettlebells only. And we have seen incredible growth and I like to coin the term applicable strength and, and flexibility and mobility, mobility. Why am I using applicable strength? Because I don't like the term functional. Functional, a squat is functional. So for example, what I mean with applicable strength is maybe some of you guys are following us on Instagram. We have an Insta as well, Lebestock, as well as my personal Insta. And Angie has one personal as well. I'm doing pistol squats now. I'm doing one arm push-ups now. Did you know? And guys are asking, people are asking in the comments, they're like, brother, how can you show us a progression video? How to progress to a pistol squat or a one arm push-up? And I was thinking about it. And you know why I was thinking about it? Because I was like, well, what am I supposed to tell them? I'm doing a lot of mobility work. I'm doing a lot of kettlebell work and the pistol and the one arm push-up. I, I can just do them now. Is he? So maybe there is some progression involved, but now my pistol and my one-arm push-up are just feeling great. So that's what I mean with applicable strength, and I believe that's what the kettlebell provides you with. So no push-ups, no pull-ups right now, even though, let me tell you, I love them. I think push-ups are one of the greatest exercises that you can do. I think pull-ups are one of the greatest exercises that you can do. That's good stuff. So combining it with body weight, actually, Luca told me, and I'll have him on on the channel uh, soon because we want to talk about programming. And I want to listen to what he says, how he combines body weight with, with kettlebells, because I think that's a great combination. I hope that answers your question, brother. Uh, the Ice King, could hard style swings completely replace deadlifts since they work the same muscles or am I missing something? Thank you. Um, ooh, that's a great question. Now, what you have to consider is when we talk about a swing, hard style, be it hard style or hand to hand or just a typical, uh, whatever, one arm swing. No matter if you choose a sports style or a hard style approach. And just on a quick side note, I believe Russian stone swing. Okay. I believe kettlebell, there is no Russian swing. I have to video, I have to make a video about this because Russians don't swing. Yes, they use the backswing motion, but they do long cycle, snatch and jerk. So I don't know who came up with the idea that there is some sort of Russian swing because kettlebell sport athletes, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, the guys that I know, I never see them do swings, All right? So this is more like maybe an American concept or just the guys, Pavel, who came up with the idea, or whoever came with the idea that there is some sort of Russian swing. So let's get back to the topic. 
Um, you use a ballistic exercise. If you swing a heavy kettlebell, you have a ballistic element involved in it. If you deadlift a heavy kettlebell, you do not have a ballistic element involved in it. Now, where is the major difference? The major difference where I believe, the major difference that I see is twofold. First of all, you can deadlift way heavier weights than you can swing, okay? Maybe there are some guys, maybe there are some nuts, some, some folks who are incredibly strong, maybe Victor Blut or maybe uh, uh, Bud Jeffries. These, these, these tanks, these walking tanks, or maybe a strong man who can swing a 200 kilo kettlebell if there even is one, right? <laughs> but so you can deadlift more weight than you can swing, right? So when it comes to strength building, you want to go to your max strength, the deadlift will be the option, right? So the ballistic component comes in that to the amount where if you go into a backswing, right? So you pull the kettlebell back into the backswing, they hike it, they call it hike when you, when you look at the uh, hard stop. Then you fully extend your hips, right? So the hip is extended, the bell's afloat. The kettlebell drops down, gravity does its thing, it comes down. So once the kettlebell drops, you go into a crisp and solid hinge. Because you have momentum involved, the stretch will be greater. I believe there is a greater range of motion of stretching your posterior chain then you have in a deadlift. So that's probably the biggest differentiating factor. And when you look at a Russian snatch or a kettlebell sports snatch, a, a hard style swing, this is where you see some flexion in the knees. Take a look at a kettlebell sports snatch, almost no flexion in the knees, almost all exclusively hinging. So somebody commented this and commented this on our YouTube channel. And this felt like, I was like, woo, that's a revelation. This guy said, this intense range of motion stretching may help for athletic performance and may help in alleviation of pain. And that was like, oof, that's it. And another thing where I believe, and this is just my opinion, don't quote me on this, it's my opinion, and it's maybe we need some more backup to, to this opinion that I'm having. I believe when you swing the weight, you probably engage your posterior chain, your lower backs, your lower back, your glutes and your hams, maybe to a, to a greater extent than the deadlift only. That's my opinion. Because you keep working for a longer time and you keep staying in motion. Whereas if you do a heavy deadlift, there's only one phase, the concentric phase, right? You lift it and when you drop it, boom, you just drop it. Controlled, but you drop it, right? So I hope this answers your question, Ice King. Brandon Woods, love the show. I had a back injury, three, uh, back injury three years ago, and kettlebells are helping me out. That's awesome. Do you think for back safety, over-exaggerating the hip hinge and cleans and snatch is safer or doing a small hinge? Ooh, great question. Ooh, you guys got great questions, man. Awesome. Brandon, I believe for spine safety, it's so great that you guys are mentioning that stuff because I, guys, again, you got to watch this podcast from Squat University. I think it's the recent podcast that he put up with Ed Cohn and, and, and Stuart McGill. I don't believe that the intensity or how did you describe it? Exaggerating. Or just, let's call it intensity. Maybe that's, that's the bet, a, a, a more suitable word. Um, a more intense hinge isn't the problem when it comes to back safety. Because if you hinge very strongly, very intensively, you get a great, greater stretch, with, which is great because that maybe releases more energy. And like we mentioned, these benefits before. And another thing that a solid hip hinge has is your core is tight, right? Your midsection is tight. Your abdominals, everything is tight. The problem, so to speak, where I see it is when we come out of the hinge into full hip extension. So what happens is shear forces. And let me, let me, I, I gotta grab something and, and show it to you. So guys, what are shear forces? I believe, uh, and this is what Stuart McGill was talking about. Uh, shear forces are, you gotta imagine, that's your spine, okay? That's your spine column. So when we go into the hinge and your hinge is solid, your spine should stay solid as well. 
okay axial pressure the pressure is nice and safe the the back muscles as well as your abs braced keeping the 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 column tight so now we come with a lot of force and that's another difference that we see from the deadlift we use a lot of force in blasting the weight out in front of us right so in the deadlift portion the weight stays on the ground with the swing what happens with the swing the weight travels forward so if the weight travels forward what do we have shear forces shear means this okay you see that so we come back this is hip extension and this is what may happen shear forces because there's weight pulling us in front of us so how do we combat this idea and this is something that i now start to apply way more bracing the abs means additional safety for your spine because you protect your spine from shear forces so this is where you gotta be careful when you fully extend the hip and that's what pavel says pavel says breathing behind the shield keeping it tight and uh dr stuart mcgill called it pavel engineered out those shear forces with the kime with the kettlebell kime like choom, where you have this tension so this is where i apply this tension even when i do the exercises more in a kettlebell sports style i believe that's the best way to protect your spine i hope this helps brother Sebastian, oh, auf Deutsch, wieder mal schön zu hören, Freunde, and I'm going to translate it quickly. Uh, trainiere drei bis viermal die Woche Kettlebells und gehe einmal ins Gym. Welche Übungen sind dort am sinnvollsten? Mache Deadlifts, Bench, Schrägbank, Dunken und uh, Pull-Ups. Um, he's asking, Sebastian's asking, uh, which exercises are the most, make the most value or, or make the most sense when I go into the gym? Because he's lifting with Kettlebells three to four times a week. Um, and thank you for the format. Danke fürs Format. Sebastian, sehr, sehr gerne. Würde mich sehr über Live-Workouts freuen. Ja, ich weiß, Sebastian, wir haben uns ein bisschen runtergefahren, gell? <laughs> Aber bei der momentanen Lage ist es halt so. Wir machen wirklich einmal pro Woche. Once a week, you see us live. That's how we do it. So, let's answer the question from Sebastian. Uh, you know what I would do? Um, because, and so awesome, because guys, you're asking questions that I ask myself. And I have the experience where I had the same thing. I was going back to the gym, but now you got to wear a mask in the gym and I don't want to wear the mask to go to the gym. I don't like this, so I'm sticking to my gym because I used to have a membership in another gym right here locally, but as soon as masks are on, I don't want to go. So what would I do? Uh, depending on what you like, Sebastian, and I hope it's okay if I answer, answer the question in English, is do what you like the most. Maybe do, do some specific hypertrophy work. Maybe do some cable work. Maybe do some isolation work. Because what you now do is you do a great, you do a great move set. You do the big compound lifts. However, when you lift with kettlebells, you already, already got the compound lifts taken care of. So maybe if you go to the gym once a week, you do a, 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 bro, a bro workout. Some isolating curls to get the pump going, to look at you in the mirror and feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's what I love to do. And then maybe some triceps extension, maybe some lat pull downs, maybe use the machines because that's what you don't use. So maybe that could be a great uh, change in your workout uh, throughout the week to say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna just hit the gym and do everything that I love with isolating the moves and getting the blood flowing, getting the pump flowing. However, if you want to opt in for those heavy exercises that you mentioned, compound movements, you got to be careful because maybe kettlebell work is already compound. And if you use heavy stuff, maybe that's too much if you hit the gym and then do compound lifts. But do whatever rocks your boat. I hope that uh, helps you and answers your questions. Uh, Kyle, I have one 16 kilogram, 20 kilogram, and 24 kilogram non competition kettlebells. Brother, go get yourself competitions, man. <laughs> I want to start with doubles. Uh, do you think I need to sell these and buy? <laughs> here, here I am already answering your question, brother. Isn't that awesome, Kyle? Um, do you think I need to sell these and buy competition, or can I get by with just buying a second uh, pair of each? Now, listen, um, this is just my opinion. And I think the standard ones are also great, okay? So sometimes people get confused and think, well, if you have solid cast iron kettlebells at home and you love working with them and you're having fun and you're getting used to the technique and it's no problem for you that sometimes you have to switch the technique 
when you use a bigger or a smaller one, then you're fine, man. However, if you, if you want to maybe dive a little bit into the sports style and, and, and maybe just see the ballistic moves and how we do the, the moves ballistically, that's, and that's just a general statement. I'm not a kettlebell sport dude. I'm not a kettlebell sport athlete. What I do is the ballistic exercises, I apply the kettlebell sport training methodology. That's the big difference, okay? So if that's also your goal, it maybe would be nice to, to opt in for competition kettlebells. And let me tell you, the hard style swing with comps, with competitions, it's working just fine. Uh, bent presses with the competitions, working just fine. All these great exercises, even a Turkish get up, I mean, that's one thing that I even had before, but just understanding from that point of view, all the grinds can be done with the competitions as well. And the beautiful thing about a competition is same, same size, yet different weights. So that will be my, I hope it, it's kind of a question, it's kind of, kind of answering a question. If, if you really want to di dive into the kettlebell sports style a little bit, how we do it, maybe comps are great. But it's also a question of budget, right? You want to see how your budget is. So if you say I'm a little bit tight on the budget, but I want to go into doubles, then I think you're fine as well with, with uh, just buying regular cast iron bells. Kenny Giuliani says, love your videos. Uh, thank you for all the content. Uh, thank you, brother. Uh, what is your opinion on doing 10 to 15 minute workouts six days a week versus 30 to 45 minutes uh, workouts three times a week? I train uh, BJJ and I want to avoid overtraining. That's a very great question, Kenny. I think at the end of the day, maybe what counts is volume. So what is volume? Volume is, let's say you do, and I'm just quoting a number, you do 10, uh, 100 hot style swings with a 32 kilogram kettlebell. So that's workload of 3.2 tons, right? That's, that's the workload that you've done. And then when you look at a, a Turkish getup, we could say, okay, uh, I do 10 Turkish getups with a 32. So that's 330 uh, kilograms of work. So in total, I did three and a half tons of work. So that's the total amount of volume. However, you always have to be careful. It's, a, it's, it's very complex because you can't just use the volume that you do with a swing on a Turkish getup. 3.2 tons of Turkish getup, you'll be dead probably, okay? But maybe total workload is something that you want to look at to say, okay, how, how much reps am I doing? Or um, maybe just count them once and see how much you do. And then maybe if you're able to pack these in 30 minutes of work, 30 minutes workouts where you don't have to train six days a week, maybe that's better. Maybe you have to find out that's something that I cannot answer. You just have to try. Just speaking from my gut, I would say if you're, if you're training in BJJ and you have uh, a lot of work done on the mat, then I would believe, and that's your priority, okay? So BJJ uh, is your priority. I would say use kettlebells maybe more sparingly, okay? Maybe as an additional, maybe two or three workouts. I think you just have to, have to see what works. Maybe, just talking from my gut, three workouts with kettlebells, and then maybe you have two or three sessions BJJ. Depending on how intense these BJJ sessions are, maybe you wanna, you wanna scale down with the workouts with the kettlebell, okay? Depends on what your priority is. So let's keep going. I hope this answers your question, brother. Matthew DiBella, is it okay to switch between hard style kettlebells and competition? Yes, of course. Of course it is. Um, sometimes, guys, um, we, we get questions like this, like, hey, uh, is it okay to do this or that? And while in some cases, I've just reacted to one of the probably funniest kettlebell workouts I've ever seen. And... <laughs> And if you would ask me, Gregory, is it okay to do these exercises? You know what I would tell you? I would tell you, hey, from a value standpoint, these exercises won't give you a lot of benefit. And some of them are even probably dangerous. So if we take the danger away, okay, let's, let's, let's weed out those exercises that may be dangerous. So you do all those other exercises which don't give a lot of value yet you love doing them, man, I'm all for it. Because, you know, I'm, you have to imagine, I'm, we work with beginners. We work with people who never lifted weights before. We work with people who have never even heard about kettlebells. We work with people who never, who never even touched dumbbells or barbells. 
We work with people who are overweight. We work with people who want to change something in their lives and they have so many obstacles to, 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 to combat, right? They're confronted with so many obstacles. So you have to imagine, that's the reason why I go mad and went nuts while my blood was boiling while I was reacting to this uh, Biggest Loser crap. Because that breaks my heart. Because I know how it is working with these people. So let's put it like this. And then maybe that answers your question, Matthew. Like I said, you can do both. But let's, put, let's take a look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture is, I, Gregory von Limbestark, <laughs> I said it in the English version, Liebestark. <laughs> Liebestark. Gotta say it in the German pronunciation. Liebestark. Okay, I am writing a program for you. Okay, the most valuable program ever. Yet, you start lifting and you don't like it. So you quit. Okay. Now you start doing some workouts with, I don't know, take somebody. Pamela Reif, Karolin Gervan, anybody out there in the space, not kettlebells, maybe body weight only, maybe some exercises that I wouldn't approve of or that I don't think make sense, yet you stick to them. What do you think is a better option? And that's the big picture is what's the best exercise? What's the best diet? What's the best program? The one that you can adhere to throughout the year, the one that gives you some results maybe and that you're having fun with, okay? So now, oh, we got 60 people in the chat. Hey, thank you so much for joining, guys. Um, Jacqueline, JT saying, I'm so glad I found your channel. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. Welcome on the ride. Ja, ich möchte euch nochmal für den Content danken. So ein wertvoller Kanal. Danke, Sebastian. Uh, James, my girlfriend recently started training kettlebells with me. She had no previous experience with lifting any weights. How long should she stick with the basics? Deadlift, squat, press. Thanks a lot. Um, James. I think that's a great question. It depends maybe on her kinesthetic sense. Let me tell you, we had one of our clients. We have a program that runs 12 weeks. And we've switched up the exercises maybe two or three times in those 12 weeks. She sticks with the basics because I see that she takes, she, she's having some trouble with her kinesthetic sense, which is not a problem, by the way. It just means she takes longer to understand the movement and to proper execute it, right? Properly executed movement, maybe it takes longer. Who cares? As long as you're on your road, as long as you're on your track, who cares if it takes longer? Nobody. So, with that being said, throughout those 12 weeks, we're still working with deadlifts. We're still working with a press, a solid press. We've incorporated the swing. We didn't go into a clean. We didn't go into a jerk. We didn't. Get, we very rarely go into a snatch, because with these basics, deadlifts, press, squat, like you mentioned, James, I think she's fine. If you see that she's kinesthetically gifted and she starts developing a good, great form, then you can maybe upgrade it and always tune in what she says. Maybe she's like, I like these exercises. So she starts with the swing. She doesn't maybe feel it. She's like, ah, I got to wait. It's always, always listen to your body. But I think the big picture answer will be, it depends on the kinesthetic sense, right? And the goal. So we have uh, Marcin Mamot. Greetings from Poland. Thank you very much, brother. Ah, what's, what's thank you in Polish? I remember it once. Dakujem. Dakujem. Oh, that's Slovakian, right? Dakujem. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, Jacqueline, I recently started lifting weights and have questions about how much protein I should be taking as a female. Jacqueline, I believe, um, I never, I don't do well, not even with, our, we don't even do this with our clients, with giving exact numbers. I believe exact numbers do make sense if you are taking this thing incredibly serious, you maybe go into some sort of bodybuilding aspect or maybe some physique aspect, maybe leaning down incredibly. But for most people, if you consume some adequate amount of protein on every meal that you have throughout the day, breakfast, meal, uh, uh, breakfast, lunch, and uh, dinner, I think you're safe. If we, would, if we would want to put it in numbers, what is it? Maybe 15 to 20 grams per session or per meal? And while you could, and, and that's very important now, 
while we could calculate it, we could calculate the exact amount of protein, it's probably not necessary because most of us don't live in a lab. Some people digest it differently. And so as long as you are aware and you're like, okay, I want to add some protein. Let's take a typical example in the morning, breakfast, and you're like, okay, I'm just adding an egg. That's my protein source. So now here comes lunch. Maybe like, oh, I'm adding some beans. That's my protein source. Or maybe some fish, some salmon or whatever. Or maybe some chicken or whatever have you. And then dinner time, you're like, oh, I'm adding some whey protein as my source. Maybe adding some cheese as my protein source. As long as you're aware that you want to incorporate the protein source into your daily uh, eating habits, I think that what works best, it not only works best from our experience, it also works best with our clients. Okay, I hope this helps, Jacqueline. Hidden Complex. Hi, do you prefer classic kettlebell sport moves or kettlebell fitness? Hmm, I got to uh, dissect this question. I, I don't understand it exactly. Do you prefer? Probably, maybe I would categorize this with what we do more... Uh, Ballistic moves, right? Long cycle, jerk snatch, uh, jerk snatch, or do I think the grinds, deadlifts, press, squat are better or preferring? Well, you know what I prefer? I prefer in lifting with the ballistics because they require so much thinking on my part and they require so much fine tuning. Fine tuning my triggering, my execution, my technique, that's what these exercises do, right? However, a, that doesn't mean that I don't like the grinds. I like the grinds because sometimes it's just great if you lift heavy. And like we mentioned in the beginning, when we talk about muscle building, I believe the grinds do have a place. Yet, I, I really love the ballistic aspect of training with kettlebells. That's one of the most differentiating factors that really make kettlebells. I hope this answers your question. Sebastian, ihr habt mich und ich denke, viele andere Menschen durch die Lockdowns gecarried. Danke dafür. Sebastian saying, we carried him and a lot of people through lockdowns. Thank you, man. Thank you, Sebastian. You know, when, when lockdown season was in, uh, we were streaming, I think, what was it, Sebastian? Vier Mal pro Woche, gell? Three to four times per week, we were streaming live workouts. That was nuts, man. That's why we have this huge library now. 140, what? 160 workouts. It, it's nuts. It's nuts. Uh, Marcin saying, do you recommend kettlebells training for runners, mountain runners? Is, is, possi is it possible to get some kettlebells staff for US? Kettlebells staff? Hmm. I don't know what you mean with this, but what I can say, I recommend kettlebells training for runners, mountain runners. Yes, I do. I actually do recommend kettlebell training probably for mostly everybody who is, who is needing some sort of explosiveness, some sort of strength some sort of flexibility, some sort of mobility, some sort of endurance, because that's what kettlebells provide, right? So I believe probably most sports would benefit from kettlebell training as a side note or as, a, as, a, as, an, as auxiliary exercises, right? Hope this helps. Um, Wolfman, hey, YouTube Punk, let's go. YouTube Punk, you know, I, you know what I got to uh, say about you? You're always on the premieres. You're always on, man. Thank you so much for the, for the, for the dedication, man. That's awesome. Uh, Wolfman85. Hi, Gregory. Greetings from Orlando, Florida. Ooh, sending you a lot of love back. Is 90 Days of Kettlebells the type of program that I can run again with higher weights upon completion? Or what do you recommend? Ooh, that's a great question. Yes, it is. It's actually a good thing. Um, what 90 Days of Kettlebells entails, guys, is the following. This is our workout course, guys. And... Uh, um, the great thing about 90 days is you work three months consecutively with kettlebells and it takes you from a beginner level. We start with very light, uh, very easy exercises and then we slowly ramp up. You have a lot of tutorials. You have the whole podcast is there. Uh, the podcast is, you can listen to it, download it and, and, and have it ad free, no interruption. And every, that's the good thing about 90 Days of Kettlebells, you'll find the link in the description, guys, as well, is the cool thing about 90 Days of Kettlebells as well is every live workout that we do on YouTube gets transferred into the course at no additional cost. So what I would recommend, Wolfman, would be 
if you're through with 90 days of kettlebells, your next goal will be go through the massive workout library with those 30, fin 30 to 40 minute workouts. And that's going to be a huge challenge because I think now we're at workout 12 and I would maybe apply the same methodology and say, okay, you know what, guys, I'm doing the same thing three times per week, kettlebell training. And now that I'm advanced a little bit, I'm using the next, this massive workout library that we're building. And then you work with those workouts. No ad breaks for free. Wow, we have 59 people in the chat. Guys, uh, I wanna have a small word from our sponsors. Stravo, my name is of no importance to you. Just know this. I sponsored today's video of Libestank. In the back, you see my friend Igor. We are both hunting for good kettlebell channels. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Libestark YouTube channel. Or else, comrade, we can't consider you to be a true student of the art of kettlebell training. All right, all right. You heard, uh, you heard what Igor said, all right? When Igor says something, you got to listen to him, man. He's a tough dude. And uh, I really appreciate that he uh, endorses this kettlebell channel. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you really are into kettlebells. That's our passion. That's what we love. That's what we do. But let me tell you guys, I've, when I've started uh, in 2019, June 2019, when Steve uh, certified us, the most pivotal moment in my career, when Steve Carter personally I flew him in. I flew him into the studio. He certified AJ and me. And you know, what's, what, you know what was the greatest catalyst? The pandemic. Actually, that's nuts. Most people see it as a crisis. I mean, it is a crisis. It's a worldwide crisis, of course. But I took the best out of it. I've built our, our uh, online academy, which serves, I think it's now over 250 students that we got in this, in this uh, online academy, which is... It, <laughs> These numbers are nuts, man. Nuts. And uh, the YouTube channel, kettlebells focusing in, honing in. Man, it's just awesome. So that just goes to show that sometimes maybe a, a, every, every mess has a message, right? So I know we're, we're in crisis mode, and maybe you are still in crisis mode, which I totally understand, but maybe there is an opportunity that, you know, you just have to look for it, and maybe you'll see it. So, oh my God, you, hey guys, you are nuts with those, with, those, with those comments. How am I supposed to work through this? <laughs> you guys are so awesome. Uh, Rizikyo saying, um, some, something that I haven't really seen addressed, when is a good place in your training of reps and sets to consider taking a step up to the next uh, kettlebell weight? Ooh, R uh, Rizikyo, we actually talked about this. We... We call it, well, let me show you here. Uh, I got to show it to you here. Give me a second. Give me a second. Where is it? Here. Let me switch the, you got to see this. Let me see if it's technical, technical stuff. I want to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should see me now. You should see my screen. So, uh, I believe one of the most important things is we follow the four rules of progressive overload. However, this is important. We apply this concept to strength, strength endurance. I don't think that these four rules of progressive overload do make sense from a heart style perspective. For example, if you say you want to build up your Turkish get up, you want to build up your heart style swings, then it's different. So let's consider the strength, strength endurance part more of a kettlebell sport type of of, of, of lifting with medium weights, not very heavy weights, okay? First thing that we do is we increase time, we work for longer time. The second thing that we do is we maybe increase speed, even though, you know, number one, increasing time is, is can be a little bit difficult if you uh, don't have the technique down pat. But actually, that's the first thing, increase time. Then we want to increase speed. We want to maybe go faster. Then this, the third thing that we apply is we want to decrease the rest that we have. And you see number four, this is when we increase re uh, weight. So how could this be a, a, a easy example for you to understand? Um, let's consider I am learning the snatch, okay? The kettlebell sports snatch. 
So I'm starting out and I'm saying, okay, I start with one minute snatch left side, okay? One minute snatch right side. And if you are very slow, that equals probably, let's say, 10 reps. If you are very fast, this maybe goes up to 20, 25 reps per minute. That's the RPM, reps per minute, right? I think the fastest that I went, and I have a video on the channel, was 27 RPM, 27 reps per minute with a 20 kilo. Angie and I, we were blasting through the workout. That was massive. So let's uh, get back to the example. Like, okay, uh, you want to increase time. So what does that mean? You got, you're starting with your one minute snatch session. So maybe you work at it. That's what I did in preparing for the IKFF test. I had one week snatch. That meant three times per week snatching. And what I did was I was doing my standard lifts. I'm digressing a little bit, but just I was doing my standard lifts and then I was adding the snatch concept, right? So now you have your first week is done. You have one minute of snatch done with, let's say, a 12 kilo, okay, or a 16. Now, your second week or maybe your third week, depending on the, the, the strategy that you're choosing, is it one or two or three weeks per, 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 uh, per overload strategy? Then you're saying, okay, now I'm doing, check this out, one and a half minutes of snatch left side. One and a half minutes of snatch right side. Then you work, where you, you work your way up, maybe three minutes, maybe four minutes, and then you land at five minutes, and I think that's where it stops. Five minutes with the left side, five minutes with the right side, that's a 10-minute set. With the 12 kilo, you're safe. Still thinking about th strength, strength endurance type of style of training. You're good. Now you increase the speed. You go back at it again. Now you start with your, maybe you say, okay, now I'm starting with two minutes or maybe three minutes, all right, two minutes. Go faster. Once you've mastered, let's say, like 20 reps per minute for maybe you do a five-minute set. I don't think you have to go up to 10 minutes. I think maybe if you're able to do a five-minute set, two and a half left, two and a half right with 20 reps per minute, that's pretty fast. Then you decrease the rest. Maybe you say, okay, I used to put the weights down in between uh, those two and a half minute sets and then I rested for 30 seconds now it's 15 seconds now it's 10 seconds now it's zero seconds all right you got me and then at the end this is why you increase the weight so you see in that aspect weight comes last you know why because it's so incredibly important to drill down the technique and the execution, proper technique, proper execution into your motor units so that you're safe and you're having fun and you don't burn yourself, okay? Hope this answers your question. Going back to the full view now. Um, man, I, you guys are nuts. I gotta stop saying that word nuts. Um, <laughs> Dion, Dion saying uh, you are the best. Thank you, Dion. Moritz Schäfer, where can I get the cheapest competition kettlebells? Grüße aus Deutschland. Um, Mega Fitness, megafitness.shop. That's where you have a great price. It's wirklich ganz gute Preise. Preis, Leistung. Ich muss dir sagen, Moritz, just a small session in German, guys. Ich muss dir sagen, Moritz, die uh, Preis, Leistung ist akzeptabel. Aber wenn du wirklich Bock hast auf Kettlebell Training und dann fetzt es dir und du hast richtig Bock drauf und du merkst, hey, ich möchte da richtig tief rein, dann würde ich dir andere Kettlebells empfehlen. Ich muss das ehrlich gesagt sagen, weil wir haben schon oft erlebt, dass die Kettlebells ein bisschen wackeln, ein bisschen machen innen drin. Da würde ich dann schon sagen, vielleicht Wolferson oder Kettlebell Kings oder was gibt es noch? Äh, die Deutschen, BVDKS glaube ich, die haben auch gute Kettlebells. Um, Jackling, uh, usually a gram or so per kilogram. Oh, you're helping each other out, guys. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's actually a great number, Zane. Frederick Doyon, do you have a routine for strength and conditioning for Muay Thai or MMA fighter? Yes, Frederick, we do have one. Check out our channel. You just have to type in uh, exercises fighter. Search our channel and you should find it. Um, Sebastian, uh, yeah, our sport team. Okay, you guys are having fun with each other. That's great. Uh, 9427 Duke. Hello, Gregory. I'm in the last month of 90 days of kettlebells. Oh, that's great to hear. That's awesome. You're almost done, man. And I continue to tear my hands each time in a different spot. Ooh, yup, yup, yup. I feel you. I feel you. 
And I mentioned this in the video, didn't I? I mentioned this in the concept, how important it is that you don't want to destroy your palm skin. Wait a second, guys. Umina. Uh, Angie's coming and Gypsy's coming. They're saying hello. They're saying hello. So, um, I think I described it clearly in the course, but maybe you want to take a look at it, is if you are still destroying your, your palm skin in the snatching, maybe you want to uh, decrease the snatching. Maybe just do one minute, maybe decrease the weight, maybe just, just be careful with your palm skin because it's actually what we say, maximum one or twice per week snatching intensively. So if it's too hard on your skin, go take a brisk walk or you do those workouts in the final month of, of 90 days of kettlebells without the snatch. And then you just maybe do a press. Just, just swap the exercises. Hello. Hey, what's up? You got to say hello, guys. Hello. And say hello to this. Say hello to my little friend. Take a look at who's here. Oh, good. So, you see, that's what's up, guys. I'm streaming so, I'm, I'm streaming for what? Over now, almost an hour now. So that's, that's the example of a strong woman. She's got my back. That's what I love about her. So, guys, uh, let's keep going. I think, man, I, I'm not sure if I'm able to do all these questions. But uh, I, I try to go faster now. Let's go fast. Quick answers, right? Boom. Let's hit it. Um, try to take calluses off hands, Zane. Great, uh, great suggestion. However, like I said, technique, if it's still lacking, reduce the snatching. Justin Halen, you lift fake kettlebell weights. Oh, you really think I do? Well, actually, they're real weights. But maybe they do get the impression sometimes that they look fake. But we can guarantee you they're pretty heavy. Especially when you go up. Let me tell you guys. When you up your game from 24 to 28, it's nuts how heavy it is. Uh, James, thanks, Gregory. You really fo look forward to the programming chat with Luca. You're welcome, James. Uh, JL Bevington, what are your thoughts on kettlebell floats? flows? Great question. I think flows are... We could classify them as the third style of training. We have hard style, we have kettlebell sport, and then we could, you know, con co create a new flow or a, a, a new style, which I believe the originators of this type of idea is on it, right? Eric Lea and, and John Wolf and these guys, they come up, came up with, this, with these ideas. Now, I have to be honest, I don't know too much about it. What I see is I don't, I don't like combining animalistic movements, these breakdancing moves, and I don't want to down talk it, but it looks like breakdancing, and I love breakdancing. Combining breakdance moves with, with, with lifting or pulling or, or swinging kettlebells. I, I don't think it's the most value yet, however, maybe I have to dig a little deeper and see that there is some value. But you know, behind hard style and kettlebell sport, you have such a huge, rich history of proven value and, and, and proven results. So that's the reason why I tend to trust Pavel and the Russian guys who came up with, with the kettlebells in general, probably a little bit more. Hope that helps. Uh, AMCD, if you have been very inactive and have poor posture, what exercises are best to do in preparation before getting the training with kettlebell? Maybe just some mobilizing exercises. If you know that your posture is maybe a little bit tricky, then I would, uh, I would, maybe consider for you to, um, to, to really mobilize your body first. And then you want to start with the basics. The deadlift is a great exercise. The press is a great exercise. The squat, and not a goblet squat, just a basic back squat. These are great exercises. But mobilizing the body, that's what a lot of people need, right? So uh, my feeling is that regardless of weight, any kettlebell used wrong or with bad posture can do damage. And you're most definitely right. That's why we always say, if you have the budget, talk to a good coach. We offer live coaching if you're interested. 
and maybe if that's if you're looking for a budget budget option maybe then opt in for a kettlebell program like we offer we offer 90 days of kettlebells as well you find the link in the description so that and that's always the best thing talk to a coach guys we always say this we always say it's so important to talk to a coach who can really help you so chris pilot sets and reps versus tabata style which is better for muscle growth chris mm, if i would have to just say yes or no uh, no i have to decide either or i would say sets and reps tabata is more conditioning and if muscle growth is your only option uh, your your only goal sets and reps and then i would uh work according to the idea of brett schoenfeld really recommend you guys follow brett schoenfeld is one of, he calls uh they call him the hypertrophy doc um where he says 10 sets plus per big muscle group okay 10 sets plus per big muscle group per week that's what optimizes muscle growth and then maybe stay in the range of eight to ten reps so um uh, uh, can we combine kettlebell workouts with calisthenics? Of course, of course. Maybe what I would do is when you start combining these different lifting mechanics. So let's put it like this. Calisthenics, you do pull-ups, you do push-ups, and you do swings. Great combo. What would be a bad combo? doing five pull-ups and then immediately doing five swings. You get what I'm saying? That's, that's probably not the best thing to do. What I would do is if you combine that stuff, then it's like you more do a circuit type of training where you say, okay, eight pull-ups, then 10 to 15 push-ups, and then 10 hard style swings. That's actually a very cool workout. That's a great idea. And then that's three, that, that's your round, that's one round. And then you do, let's say like four to five rounds. Okay, with enough rest in between. That would be a great option. So, um, how many times a week should I do kettlebells? Should I do push-pull legs with kettlebell? Paul is asking this question. I think three times per week is great. And, you know, when, when we talk about push-pull legs, when we talk about kettlebell training, guys, you have to always consider that it's not bodybuilding. It's not isolating your body. When you work with kettlebells, you mostly work your full body. So that's that kind of transition that you maybe want to make, Paul, is maybe say, okay, I don't have to treat the kettlebell like, like typical barbells or, or typical dumbbells or typical uh, machine training. It's a little bit different, okay? So, man, you guys are not 68 people in chat. I, and I got to take a short break right now. Uh, give me a short break and I'll be right back. So here we are back again, guys. Wow. You know what's nuts? When you love what you do, I love answering questions. I love to talk about the topic. Because Jim Rohn said, you know what's the good, what's the best thing that you can do with a great story? Is tell it multiple times. So it's stored in your brain. So uh, I'm kind of uh, <laughs> in between because I have, I have to finish, guys. But uh, you guys keep posting this question, so I got to go, gotta go fast. You see, you two punks saying Gregor going to be here all day. <laughs> That's what's up. You guys are triggering what I love, so I can't stop. But I have to stop now, guys. I'm just going through it real quick. Uh, uh, road part, not kettlebell specific, but what was the best life lesson you've learned? Oh, my God. Now you're asking these philosophical questions. Are you nuts? 
You really want me to stay the whole night? <laughs> oh, that's, that's a deep question. Off the top of my head, what's the best thing I've learned? Life lesson? I think... Yeah, yeah. Giving up is sometimes a great option. That's probably the best life lesson I've learned. Giving up is sometimes the only option that you have. Because maybe you hear, I don't want to go too long on this, but you maybe hear this, right? It says, don't give up, and stay on it, and keep grinding, and keep pushing. And you know, back when Gary, Gary V was exploding, and don't, mis don't misunderstand me, man, I, I love Gary V. But when he was exploding, it was like, you got to do it, you got to stick to it, you have a lot of time, you got to stick to it, rah, rah, rah. And I've learned in life that sometimes you have to quit. I followed, I had a dream that I've pursued for 15 years. And I've invested my, my life, my blood, sweat, tears, everything. I've, I've invested everything that I've had in this dream. And after 15 years, I had to make it. I was on a crossroad and I had to decide. I was like, okay. And the question that I had to ask myself was, do I have to work harder in order to make this work? Or do I have to quit and pursue something else? And I chose the latter. And I'm not looking back. So sometimes giving up is not only the only, but probably the best option. Hope that helps. Um, man. I can't follow these comments. I need a moderator. <laughs> okay, Gloria. Hello from Spain. My kettlebell collection is 2 times 8, 2 times 12, and 116. Do you think this is a kettlebell collection of my entire life as a woman? More benefits with more weight? Cheers. Women. Yeah. Gloria, I think you have your set. Yeah, your set. Most women, I believe, work with... Once they get accustomed to kettlebells and once they get stronger with kettlebells, they are um, they're safe with 12 and 16 and even the 8 kilo, especially doubles. Because I'm taking Angie as an example. Angie's really strong with her technique. She's not only strong, she's only sa also safe with her technique. And mostly when we do doubles, she starts with two eights and then upgrades to two twelves. So I think, Gloria, you've made a great decision and maybe just as a side note when you opt in to learn a heart style swing maybe then you can upgrade to 2024 once you understand the heart style swing uh, Ana Martinez I lost strength in my left arm to, to my lymph node removal due to cancer I found your channel be doing your kettlebell workouts give me life you and Angie are the best thank you so much uh, Anna, we wish you a lot of love, strength, and, and endurance and, and power to, to, to keep fighting, to keep going. So awesome that we are able to reach you guys. That's why I love it, man. That's why I love what I do. And um, that's why I think it's, it's you know, I, and the, the amount of people that we're able to reach is, is, is for me, you know, when you come from humble beginnings, it's, it's mind-boggling. And you always have to appreciate it. You always have to stay humble. And you have to understand what kind of responsibility that, that, that's coming. So that's why I'm all about sharing love. Maybe sometimes when people see these reactions, they're like, ooh, that dude is, is jealous or he hates on other people. And I do understand this perspective. I have to be honest. I do understand this perspective sometimes because some people clearly are jealous, jealous of other. And that's the reason why they react because they want to downplay or down talk other people. In our case, guys, I believe it's just, you know, YouTube served the, the plate. I was doing three reactions that took off in the channel, and now we follow the channel. We follow a little bit the algorithm, and, but the idea is to always serve you some, some edutainment, some education mixed with some entertainment. So, Delgado, hello, Gregory. I appreciate your dedication, homework. I'm a female, pretty lean and toned already. I'm trying to transition from years of traditional weightlifting to only kettlebells. Which kettlebell exercises are the best to maintain and build lean muscle in biceps and legs? I currently own a 12. I'm enjoying your life workouts very much. Do you also do individualized programming? Thanks. Um, you know what I would say? Thank you for the question. I would say you, you're talking about biceps and legs. Let me tell you, for legs, the kettlebell is probably one of the best things. Jerks, snatches, swings long cycle, uh, Turkish get-ups, these are so powerful 
exercises. So what I would do is if you're always looking for to, to really keep that lean muscle, make sure you involve the grinds, press, squat, reverse lunge, turkey get up. And for your legs to get them really strong, plus maybe shape them, get get them in better shape, because that's that's an experience that Angie had, and not only Angie, some of our clients as well, is um, as long as your nutrition is safe, but you mentioned that you're already lean, then uh, it's the combo of, of both. And that's what we do in our work, workout. So if you follow our life workouts, I think you're safe. If you want to dig deeper, maybe 90 days of kettlebells or something for you, you find a link in the description. And another thing, uh, that would be, uh, you mentioned individualized, individualized programming. We do offer it. We do offer one-to-one -one coaching. You'll find it on our website, lebestock.ch. The website should be in the link as well, if you scroll down. Guys, yeah, I'm almost through with these questions. I'm powering through. I'm powering through. Hi, brother. Uh, Mitilesh from India. Love your videos on your style of presentation. Impressive, brother. Counting on more content. Thank you very much. Sending you a lot of love. I know in India, it's kind of, it's kind of tough right now. So we're sending you a lot of love and strength. Thank you so much. Uh, YouTube Punk is going down. What? <laughs> uh, Parochion Lotor, what style of kettlebell training do you recommend? I think the combination of heart style and kettlebell sport is, is, kettlebell sport is the best way to do it. And uh, the hybrid mentality. We really are digging the hybrid mentality. It's really, really awesome. Uh, I hope this answers your question. So the combo, I think, is great. And Wednesday comic book show, is kettlebell cardio enough or do you supplement with running or other cardio? I think kettlebell, uh, kettlebell training is, is enough because it's, it's more of conditioning. You have weights involved with it. So the cardio aspect is taken care of. However, if you enjoy running or you enjoy doing some cardio as well, then go ahead and do it. But I think if it's not sports related, if it's not about performance, then I think you're safe about your cardio needs you're safe with train, lifting with kettlebells, especially if you do it the way we do it, with, with the four-time aspect, then you have mostly everything taken care of. Sordius88, huge respect, man. You're great. Thank you, brother. Um, I mean, for general cardiovascular health and overall fitness, I hope this answers your question that I've just posted. Nick saying, nice. Thank you. Uh, Donnie, greetings from Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for sharing your passion and knowledge of all things kettlebells. Just purchased. That was you, right? Let me check it. Ooh, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm just checking it. I just saw it. Just, it, it, it blinked, but I, but I just swiped off of it. Hey, Amen. Or woman, whatever you are. <laughs> Thank you so much for your trust. You purchased 90 days of kettlebell training. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And please stay in the chat, guys, because I have something special for you. I'm almost through with the questions and I have something special for you guys if you're interested in 90 Days of Kettlebells. And let me tell you, um, Donnie D, you find all our contacts. You find them in the description. You have to use them. You have to write me an email because there's gonna something's coming up and I want you to profit from this as well. Uh, Emilio Medina saying, hey, what are your thoughts on Mark Wildman's time on detention kettlebell programs? Emilio, I'm not as familiar with his time on detention tension program. However, what I do like is the aspect of time, time on detention. I think it's great. I think time on detention is something that was so, that was popping up, that was coming up, I think was eight years ago or 10 years ago. Um, when this was a new revelation in, in sports physiology and science, uh, when they realized, well, what is maybe even more important than just counting reps is how long are you working with the muscle or how long is the muscle under stress? So while I do think time of attention is a great idea, you see, in our case, we don't, we follow kettlebell workouts that are very simple to understand where time and attention is already taken care of. You know, let, let, let's talk about quickly about simple and sinister. When you do simple and sinister, you don't have a lot of time on the tension per se. You do ten, we do 10 hard style swings uh, every minute on the minute, 10 sets of 10, then we have 100 swings. Then we do uh, the Turkish get up. So yes, while we do have maybe 30 seconds for one Turkish get up or maybe 40 seconds for one get up, I drop it down, I, I release the bell and I completely relax. So maybe that's not a lot of time on the tension, but I feel already how my strength gains are there because the pistol squat that I'm doing right now is easy. 
the weight feels easier from simple and sinister and my one arm push up is really upping uh, its game so so uh that's my experience um here we are uh, nick robinson i've just signed up for 90 days looking forward to shifting my gut Re really you guys should... another one hey you guys are you guys are killing it you guys are killing it thank you so much man so that's that's over let me tell you guys over a hundred sold courses it's nuts i think i've poked the hornet's nest <laughs> um let's keep going frederick doyon awesome you have the best kettlebell channel by oh thank you frederick we, you know there there are many great kettlebell workout channels out there and i thought about making a video about this topic i think you you guys have to follow not only kettlebell related but you have to follow luca Kurcher. Unfortunately, Luca, my brother, if you're watching this, he's not doing enough content. He has to do more content, but he's a great coach. You got to follow Squat University. You got to follow Brett Schoenfeld off the top of my mind. You got to follow Dennis Vazilev. You got to follow Ivan Markov. You got to follow um, Pavel Krotov is his name. Uh, I just started following him. He, he's, 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 he's got some solid and great workouts. You got to follow Kettlebell Kings. You got to follow Brittany Van Draymond Dyke. You got to follow Steve Carter. You got to follow strong first um just some these that's because the the stuff that's out the mike salemi oh i'm, a, I'm actually thinking about uh, asking mike salemi to join us on our podcast you got to follow dan john uh these are awesome guys and you know everything's already there what we offer is maybe just a new perspective so i really really enjoyed i'm really humbled that you guys are 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 digging uh our uh what, what we do so um i gotta go faster uh awesome thanks for the answer wolfram you're, you're welcome at anna hugs and love for angie and gypsy yeah always these two uh procom labor what is your personal training like do you use barbells dumbbells and rings and right now i'm only using kettlebells and normally i additionally use some i have this local gym that i mentioned that i visit once a week right now i'm not doing it because of covid and everything lockdown and stuff but normally i used to visit them once a week to do my typical Strength training, because that's where I'm coming from. Traditional weightlifting, traditional uh, bodybuilding type of training. And sometimes we just do uh, just some regular stuff. Some push-up, one-arm push-ups I'm getting into it. I'm getting into the pistol squats. I really love pull-ups. Currently, it's kettlebells only. So, um, okay, uh, we'll consider the coaching option. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Sim Solas, what are the best benefits from being kettlebell-focused only? Let me tell you, I believe there's six benefits. And, and you guys are asking so... Good question. That's the Angie. I'm almost done. I'm telling her, baby, I'm almost done. And she bears with me. <laughs> She's such a, such, a such a great woman. Um, off the top of my head, benefits of kettlebell training. First of all, muscle building. We're working with weights. Second of all, you do something for your heart. Cardiovascular. Third of all, endurance. You do something not only for the heart specific, but the, the endurance aspect of training. You combine it. Fourth, you have your own gym. So if there's a zombie apocalypse, you're still able to lift weights. And not only lift weights, you're able to swing weights. So no zombie's gonna get close to you once you start swinging. That's a great bulletproof recipe that I just gave you for apocalypse. <laughs> then you have, uh, you're taking care of back pain. Be because we believe the, the kettlebell works the midsection, so it's probably one of the greatest tools against back pain. And number six is it's easy on the joints. So these are the six benefits that I believe are so pervasive and so strong. That's what kettlebells provide you. And the great thing is once you start lifting with kettlebells, it provides you everything at once. Once you pick up the kettlebell and start lifting. Intermission. That's what's up, you two pug. Uh, Ruxin, uh, thank you. Love from India. Sending you love, bet. Neil. Hey, what's up, Neil? Gregory, how do you personally get started in kettlebell training? And what's... And what's a training principle you wish you adapted sooner? Ooh, that's a great question. I, I got started uh, back in, I saw kettlebells the first time in 2011. 2012-ish, no, 20, I've heard about kettlebells before, but I saw it in action 2011, 2012. And then uh, I started lifting once I took it serious when I uh, invited Steve Carter. That was June 2019. He certified us and that I'm never looking back. That's the greatest decision I've ever made in my life. Steve Carter changed my coaching career so dramatically. It's, I can't thank him enough for it. And um, 
What's a training principle you wish you adapted sooner? The four time principle. I think four time is one of the greatest principles that you can use for general fitness for most people. Hope this helps. Abid, can you talk about breathing when using kettlebells? Like how do you breathe? And can you speak about how to breathe when lifting kettlebells? Great question. We're actually using a, a we call it power breathing method. Okay. Just quick, very quick. You can try this at home if you're right now with me. Uh, use your hands and touch your ab abdomen, right? Now, follow me. You start breathing. Easy. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. Do it once again. Okay? Now, if you, you have to breathe out very intensively. Not, but... You got to use your diaphragm and your lungs. Really push the, the air out. So, if you do it right, you should feel your abdomen moving. Now, there's two types of breathing that we use in kettlebell training. The first that we use is power breathing. Power breathing means you tense your abdominals and you pronounce the exhale, but you don't pronounce the inhale. How does that sound? If I'm touching my abs right now, it's, I got to, careful if I don't spit at the mic. So it's very sharp exhale and you should feel your abdomen brace. It goes up and down. Your diaphragm is moving. Your lungs are moving. And so what that does, it works your diaphragm and your lung like a pump. That's probably the best thing to do when you work with kettlebells. So it's, if we do a press, it's rack, back up, rack. That's what we use. And there's another aspect that you can use. It's called Valsalva maneuver. That's when you, for example, use a very heavy press. And I just learned this concept of the scapula plane press from Mike Salemi, where you have a heavy kettlebell, then you go out, working, following the, the, the plane of the, of, the, of the scapula. Then you press it up, you rack it, you come down and you keep the air in. So it's like, still keeping the abs tight. And the Valsalva maneuver was actually the maneuver that uh, Eddie Hall used when he was lifting 400, uh, 500 kilograms. And it's probably the same technique that uh, Thor used when he lifted 501. So I'm almost through, guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Uh, Naba 183 greetings from Chile you were right I'm 51 moved five weeks ago from 20 to a 24 kettlebell for clean and press the four kilogram increase is really brutal yes it is man and you know what's nuts um, Pavel even talks about it there are two kilogram increments you could actually jump from a 20 to a 22 yet I believe it's valuable if you compete I believe it's maybe better if you use the four kilogram increments because Pavel says this shocks the body the four kilogram increment not only shocks the body, it gives you additional feedback and signals to tell your body that your technique has to be safe. Otherwise, you got to downgrade the weight and work in your technique. Thoughts on quick and death from Pavel? Oh, I've heard somebody mention this. I got I to gotta write it down. I got to write it down. Quick and death. Quick and death. Pavel. I got to check it out. Right now, I'm rereading uh, Simple and Sinister because now that I'm doing Simple and Sinister, I'm reading it differently. Yep. Um, uh, so, thoughts will, will come. Rodrigo. Brandon, love the channel. Had a back injury three years ago. Helped me and they helped me back for cleans and snatches. Do you think over... Ah, oh, Brandon, I've answered your question, Brandon. You just have to go back a little bit. I've answered your question. Uh, hi, uh, have you ever had overtraining syndrome? Well, maybe not overtraining, but I felt some sort of fatigue. And we already talked about it. Maybe you have to scroll back a little bit. I think overtraining syndrome may happen, even though people say it's rare. But this general feeling of fatigue may be that your body's telling you maybe you're going too heavy, maybe you're going too fast, maybe you got to slow down a little bit, maybe do a deload phase workout, or maybe stop working out for a week or two. Hey, El Bonator. Thank you, Sensei, Gregory, and Angie. You guys help tons in kettlebell training. Nine days of kettlebells is perfect info. Thank you very much. So, guys, here it comes. Here it comes. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so, so, so much. There is something I have for you. There is something I'm having for you because you guys tuned in. Now, uh, just quick. I want to make this quick. We have 90 days of kettlebells, right? So, 90 days of kettlebells is this monstrous... Um, Oh, that's, that's the wrong slide. <laughs> that's, that was a pre-order slide. 90 Days of Kettlebells is our workout course that's going really, really well. 
uh, we have 100 plus signups. And let me tell you what you get in this course because it's so important. For, I want you to understand. I think what 90 days can offer you is a regular workout routine that can carry you through the whole year. Plus, it is a source of information that keeps growing and growing. Now, check this out. With 90 days of kettlebells, you get three months of kettlebell training. And we start very easy with beginners in mind because we work with beginners. And then it slowly increases. It goes into advanced workouts. After, after the end of three months, you want to be as advanced as possible with these workouts and with the technique and the tutorials that we offer. The second thing that 90 Days of Kettlebells offers is, a lot of people mention this and that's what we focus on as well in our tra training and coaching, is it offers you a, a, are you seeing the full comments right now? Yeah, you should see it, right? I gotta scroll forward. Yeah, you see it, sorry, technical problems. Um, what 90 Days of Kettlebells is also offering you is a great nutrition coaching program. Now, listen carefully. I don't believe in diet plans. I believe they do work, but they only work very short term. They don't work long term. What does what works out long term? Here it goes. Habits. Habits are the most powerful tool that you can build to change your life. Okay? And Jim Rohn said the beautiful thing about life is you can change it every day. So you got to read. And if you're really digging habits, you got to dig deeper. Check out the book from uh, uh, James, James Clear, Atomic Habits. You got to read that book. It's awesome. Now, what 90 Days of Kettlebells offers you is you will build three, three powerful nutrition habits. They start very easy and they increase as well. And that's our coaching. That's what we do with our clients in real life. We help them get into kettlebell training. And then we help them with powerful need eating habits. And we just had one of our clients. We're going to post her on a show, social. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. It's Lebeshtak or my name, Gregory Jemaili, if, if you can spell this. But you find this if you check out our Lebeshtak Instagram. You should find me and Angie as well. Make sure you follow Gypsy as well. <laughs> so our client is, I think she's in her 12th week now. And she works intensively with us. So it's one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? Very intense. And she lost, what is that, English? 25 pounds, it's 12 kilos, and she's 54 years old. You gotta grab this, right? 54 years old, 12 and a half kilos down, almost 13, I think that's 25 pounds or even more with the power of kettlebells and the power of nutrition coaching. That's what we packed densely into this course. Now, it doesn't stop there. What you get with this course as well is you get a massive bonus content array. We have a lot of videos in the 90 Days of Kettlebells course that we don't offer on YouTube, okay? Exclusive videos. Then you have a full tutorial for all the exercises. You have a breakdown of every workout, okay? Massive. You have a three-hour seminar with Steve Cotter. And that's getting 90 Days of Kettlebells worth alone because this seminar with Steve... This was the pivotal moment that I was talking about. Three and a half hours seminar with the legend himself, Steve Cotter. It's, it's pre-recorded. It's a three and a half hour video. You will learn the value that you're getting out of this is nuts. And now here it comes. We offer continuous support for the course because what do we do? We are having our Kettle Nights podcast. And, and by the way, we have Brittany Van Schrebendijk, the Kettlebell World Champion. She's coming up on our podcast. It's so awesome that she was able to make time. And we have another session with Dan John coming up. And we have Luca, our regular guest, like Dan John, on our podcast coming up as well. Now, what happens is you get these podcasts in the course at no additional costs, and you can download it. Because people said when you watch the podcast on YouTube, there's so many ad breaks, which I do understand, but this is what keeps the YouTube channel growing and rolling. But if you pay once, you got the podcast and everything that's coming up, continuous updates for free in the course, no breaks, and you can download it. Doesn't stop there. What I also offer you is, I think we're now at workout number 12. Once you're done with 90 days of kettlebells, what we offer you is we stream once a week on Monday. We stream live once a week. The workout that we stream will be transitioned into 90 days of kettlebells. Every time the workout is done, I download it, I edit it, 
and we put it into 90 days of kettlebell. So that means you have a continuous growing library of workouts ad free. You can just push the play button. And it's so easy. It's our, it's our very easy coaching system. And let me tell you, I want, I want to show you the coaching system, guys. One second. I want to show you the coaching system. I want you to see it. So check this out. This is how it works. Let's check out where 90, three, is, did you see that? 370 enrollments. Oh my God, we have almost 400 students. Uh, this is nuts, man. Oh my God. Now I want to show you this. Check this out. This is what the course looks like as an enrolled student. Boom. This is how you work through it. This is how you work through it. You work through it, complete and continue, thank you, and then blah, 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 you see this? It's, it's small, it's a little small, I know, down the, in, in, the, in the section, right? But you see, this is how you work through. This is our online education system, and it's so cool, guys. It's so cool. Oh, I clicked the wrong button. Sorry, gotta get back. So that's what we offer you, right? So now check this. If you're still in the chat, the 50 people that are still rocking in the chat, guys, I have something for you. And this is only now, and I'm serious. I'm offering this only now. When I'm, when I'm over, once the chat, once the live stream is done, the discount is gone. Check this out. If you're really interested, I want to offer it for you because you guys just spent over an hour with me. And I do appreciate the time that you've invested with me. And I want to give something back. So if you use the code live stream, okay, L-I-V-E-S-T-R-E-M. AM, click the link in the description right now, it says 90 days of kettlebells. You click on it, you use this code, you get 10% off. Only now. Okay? So that's what you're getting, guys. That's when I say thank you. That's the code that you got to use. I'm going to type it in the chat. Thank you so much for joining, guys. It was such an awesome, 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 awesome experience with you guys. I think we're going to make do this on a regular basis. We have massive amounts of contents coming up. I have so much things to talk about. I've streamed for one and a half hours and I got to stop now. So ladies and gentlemen, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you so much for being so lit in the chat. I really appreciate it. I think it's so beautiful, the, the community that we're able to build. We're able to build this beautiful community of like-minded kettlebell enthusiasts who want to join and want to help each other out. It's just beautiful. And if any one of you out there have now bought the kettlebell, uh, have bought 90 days of kettlebells without the 10% code, send me an email and we'll, we'll get you something back and we'll arrange something. So guys, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining. And oh my God, cheers. But you are worth the full price. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. But use it. Use the 10% code off. Because I know sometimes, you know, the finances are tight right now with the pandemic. So I hope we can help you out a little bit. And remember, you pay once and you get continuous support and updates for free. So, guys, thank you for the love. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. Welcome to 90 Days of Kettlebells. 90 Days of Kettlebells is a kettlebell workout program that combines kettlebell training with simple and easy to follow nutrition coaching. It is designed for beginners who want to train with kettlebells, profit from a proven nutrition coaching system to get in shape and lose weight. This program is made for you if you are a responsible and diligent person who wants to discover the potential of the kettlebell and improve Improve your eating habits to lose weight, get in shape, and become a lean, mean machine. This program is not for people who are looking for the magic bullet, an easy way out, a cookie cutter meal plan system, or a genie in the bottle. This program requires some diligent and hard work, and it's made for you if you are ready for it. We combine the best of both worlds in this program. The kettlebell with its vast array of benefits that range from fat burning to muscle building while being easy on the joints and scientific-based nutrition coaching that helps you build new eating habits that help you make better decisions even after the expert left 
the Rome. We have been certified by kettlebell legend Steve Cotter himself personally in our gym and both the IKFF kettlebell coach certificates. We have also been certified by the world leading and scientifically based nutrition experts, Precision Nutrition as a level one and level two nutrition coach. This is actually what we do with our clients in real life on a daily basis. All the experience from the last five years that we have been able to gather is now put into this course. Now the program works as follows. You will do three kettlebell workouts per week designed for beginners in mind that gradually increase in difficulty. You will build three powerful eating habits that have proven successful in our nutrition coaching. The program lasts 12 weeks and will teach you the ins and outs of kettlebell training as well as building powerful nutrition habits. All this is accessible in our revolutionary e-learning platform that is part of the Lebestock Academy. In the bonus content, Content, you will get access to 30 days of kettlebells. That's actually another full blown workout course. This is actually also the predecessor of 90 days of kettlebells. You will get five additional workouts, a three and a half hour seminar with Steve Cotter, where he certified us in June 2019. And this seminar alone is worth over $700 if you would do it with Steve in person. You will also get a two hour interview with 11 time kettlebell world champion Denis Vazilev. You get a one hour video where we cover all the necessary exercises that you will need to do this program and we will take you through it step by step. Another part of the bonus content is a video where we will teach you all the necessary mobility and warm-up routines so that your joints are ready to tackle the workouts. We actually offer this type of coaching in real life and we call it the fat burner package where we offer three personal trainings per week with additional nutrition coaching along the way. All of the experience from this high intensity coaching is now densely packed into this workout course called 90 days of kettlebells for 97 Swiss francs and that's exactly 105 US dollars. Click on the link below either in the description or as a big blue button and start your kettlebell journey now. 90 days of kettlebells is waiting for you to help you get in shape of your life for the rest of your life.